Hi guys, happy Monday. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Choppa History. We're going to have Nick Trask on from Trask Performance, Trask Turbos. Um, and shout out to Indian Motorcycles, Law Tigers, and Badlands for sponsoring Chopper History and letting us tell all of our great stories and interview other people in the industry. And if you guys have any suggestions, comments, want us to talk to somebody, please let us know, send us a message, comment, any of that. Um, make sure you do. And also make sure you check out our Instagram Perowitz underscore cycle fab. Um, go give us a follow. We are trying to build that up and post as much as we can. So go over there and like that page on Instagram. And also if you guys want any of our apparel, hotleathers.com has our t-shirts and sweatshirts. Go over there and get one. And also we are going to be having our first paint show. So for 2021, it's confirmed for March 10th at the Broken Spoke in Daytona. It's actually in Ormond Beach. Um, did you confirm what sponsors? And what would um, Facebook Live be without TP's phone ringing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got um, uh, a good amount of sponsors. Um, of course, the Broken Spoke. And we've got um, SATA. Yeah. Spray equipment. And Hard Drive is going to be giving a ton of cool swag, which they always give useful things like battery tenders, um, the little compressors that blow air for drying your bike, straps. Right. Um, we give we give some really cool prizes. You know, it's stuff that everybody can use. Um, uh, we also have American Icon, uh, which is our clear that we're using, which is awesome. And then CSI, which is uh, they make all buffing and uh, cleaning materials. And CSI is gonna donate uh, a bunch of um, uh, detail stuff. Cleaning products. Right, cleaning products that we'll be giving away at our show. So we've got those two sponsors, which are great. And then of course, Paco. Paco supplies us with the trophy tanks that we paint. And um, we're gonna have some really cool trophies. And uh, everything will be hand painted. Uh, Jody and I will each do one. And then we'll have other custom painters. Flea, uh, most of you know who Flea is. Flea is an awesome painter, old friend of ours. Flea is going to do, I think, two trophies this year. You always say old friend. It's like we have a lot of old friends. Well, we do. You know, this is Chopper Everybody history, is so it's old. about old, <laughs> you know. Um, and if anybody has any questions about old history stuff, Having to do with the industry, just or new. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let us know. Um, you know, I've been in the industry long enough. I know pretty much everybody in there, and um, there's lots of stories to be told. All right, so we'll give a shout out to some of these people because I know we didn't do that last week. Um, Stephen Drago, good afternoon. Wenton, Greg Simon, Gary from Florida, Derek Quarter, Matt Travis, Mike Woodcheck, Kurt and Amanda Emery, um, Big D. Uh, Craig from American Icon. Hey, Craig. Very cool. Thanks for always tuning in, Craig. Uh, Jeff Zella, good morning. Um, the dude. Oh, the, <laughs> hey, dude. the dude. Um, Haley from Grip Twisters Biker Page. Um, Kyle Pusser. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, Darcy. Um, Darcy. Hey, Darcy. And Steve Brenner. But all right, guys. So let's get let's get to our guest. So today, like I said, we have uh, Nick Trask. So, hey, Nick. Hey, hey Nick. Nick. Oh, yeah. How are we doing today? Man, everything's great. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, how's the weather out there in Arizona? Man, it's actually uh, the last couple of days has been kind of miserable, but it's, it's, uh, it's kind of nice to get some rain. Yeah, but what is miserable for you? Rain too much. Yeah, but what's the, but what's the temperature? Although I did see today, oh, we get snow. Uh, we actually got snow a week ago. It's kind of so it's happened twice since I've been here. The last twenty something years, I'm going to see the rain twice in Arizona. Wow. I snowed twice now, I'm sorry. Yeah. No kidding. Well, we're supposed to get uh, uh, a big snowstorm today. We're just waiting for it to start. Literally. Yeah, we're supposed to get uh, 8 to 12 inches here. Oh, man. Yeah. And, so and actually, in the last, not today, believe it or not, it's warmed up to about 30 today. But the last few days, it's been about 10. 9. Yeah, yeah 10. 10. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's up to 10, yeah. Bitterly cold. Bitterly we can cold. handle it. 
Yeah. I don't even own a jacket that would support that kind of weather. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Hey, so Nick, tell us about the uh, King of the Baggers and, yeah. and, you know, your involvement here. Okay. Well, it um, it started off as uh, as they Rob bite us okay. and a couple of guys uh, got together and uh, Drag Specialties jumped on board and, and uh, we put a put a bunch of bunch of teams together and, and uh, we went and raced the Moto America series and uh, raced in Laguna Seca. It was on it was on TV and on uh, Facebook and it was a big hit. So uh, but all the guys and, and Rob got together and we, we put on the Bagger Racing League. And uh, it's a little more uh, suited for the Harley rider. It's, it's going to be an all-Harley event. It's going to be a three-day event. In the, uh, the first one's going to be a three-day event in June, 25th through the 27th. There's multiple classes. There's an FXR uh, Dyna class for the guys that want to get it, want to want to, want to put a bike in the, yeah. in, the yeah. in the race. So there's going to be a class for FXR Dyna. There's a class for the hooligan guys. And there's a class for the stunters. Right? So oh, we'll really? Dyna, That's right? cool. Kids. So it's just cool, man. It just brings in, brings in a lot of excitement. And yeah. then there's, there's, the, there's the big class, which is our bag of GP class. It's a little more serious, and and uh, you know we kind of go all out to build something that's that's going to be. So when you um, say there's a, there's a class for the for the hooligans, and then a class for the stuntists, wouldn't that kind of be the same? Like are the stunt well, degree, is like well, is going to be doing wheelies all around the corner? Yeah, yeah. We we just had the we just had the the initial uh, Chuck Walla um, event last yeah. Yeah. week. week ago. And uh, you know, this guy's like sea bear doing a, doing drifting around the whole track. It is right? unbelievable. He I think is, he wheelied the whole track and he drifted the whole track. Wow. I believe yeah. it. He is unbelievable. Every video he posts, I'm like, man, that kid is nuts. <laughs> so the first <laughs> event is gonna be in Salt Lake City. Yeah, Miller Raceway, uh the twenty fifth through the twenty seventh. And uh it's it's an old Harley deal and it's gonna be invited, you know, anyone can come, anyone can can build a bike and bring a bike and enter it. And it's, there's going to be a, uh, a bike show there. There's uh, uh, Ness is going to put on a bike show, and so it's just going to be a, a good event, right? It's it's going to be a good, all fun Harley event. Where is that again? Miller Raceway in Salt Lake City. That's okay, going to be the first one. Yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's in June. Yeah, yeah. and I June, think yeah. yeah, I think that we're going to come yeah. to that. We would definitely I think come to I that. I think it's going to be a, with all the guys that have got involved and that's been part of it. You know, we have a lot of followers. So it's going to grow like wildfire. and Yeah, oh, I think so too. You know, it's great that you get in on the ground floor of this whole thing. Yeah, man. It's, uh, we're one of the original guys that, that built a bike. And it was kind of a, man, should we do it? Should we do it? It's a lot of money, right? A lot of expense. But you know what? We haven't had much fun. Let's just go ahead and give it heaps, right? So we did. We, we jumped on a bike. We built a bike. And, and uh, we showed guys that turbocharging, you know, we're the only turbocharged bike ever to be on Laguna Seca in history. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. That's so really the first cool. one's able to do it. And, uh, Tell us about yeah. your bike. So here it is, right? Well, it, uh, it started off as a 17 Road Glide with M8 motor in it. And, uh, uh, we built the motor up to, we just kept it a 107 stock displacement. But we, we, wanted to, we wanted to keep it dependable. Uh, so we kept the meat in the cylinders, the meat in the cases, right? We didn't want to make it too thin. We wanted this thing to last. So uh, what size is uh, the motor, Nick? A 107 inch motor. Oh, okay. And, yeah. uh, and we put boost to it. It makes roughly a 200 horse. And uh, it's real dependable. Right? Uh, super dependable. And that was what we're going for. We, we didn't want to build a big motor that was already stressed out, right? We wanted to keep the motor stock, keep it strong, and yeah. just put some boost in it. Yeah, you got to make it last. Make it last. That's the key. Do, right? do you it's not a drag race bike, so it's it's uh it's gonna last longer than, than a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah, we know about that. We um, go drag race from from corner to corner. Did we you walk, we walk did, the track? Did you pick the Milwaukee eight versus um a traditional twin cam well, like, we for any reason? Well, we could have gone to the twin cam. We got a lot of experience with twin cam. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like you'd want something you know a lot about, but yeah, we wanted to uh, come out with the latest, latest you know engine and and uh, kind of show guys that that, that uh, you know turbocharging is nothing to be scared of, right? So uh, well, you know, it, it's it's an awesome thing that you know you could take a hundred and seven inch um, Milwaukee eight, put a turbo on it. And, yeah. and make 200 horsepower. That's unbelievable. Yeah, make 200 horse and it live live on the racetrack. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So I mean, it's just a testament to your business. Yeah. You, you know, know, we've been doing it a long time, 
and uh, we've gone through a lot of, you know, you know, problems or what do you call it, uh, you know, bumps in the road to get things dialed in. But man, we just yeah, you got to work out the bug. right? You got to persevere and and just keep going. You can't quit. Yeah. So uh, we walked the track. We were Laguna Saker and Travis Wyman from Wyman Racing. He was riding our bike. He walked us. We will be physically walked around the track. And when you're walking up the back straight or the back straight up toward the uh, up toward the corkscrew, and that hill is steep. Right? I'm yeah, half and half 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 halfway up. Yeah, I was going to ask I'm you thinking, that. I'm thinking, man, my bike, how's it going to last drag racing up this hill? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of sweating it as we're walking up this hill. I can barely run up this hill, let alone my motorcycle being pinned all the way up this hill for eight laps. I'm just thinking the whole time climbing up this hill, it's super steep. And you get to the top and you can almost see the ocean in Monterey. Wow. Wow. Right? It's that high elevation. You can almost see the ocean. Well, you can see it in the, the distance. But, and, uh, then there's the corkscrew, and it's like the first part of the corkscrew is like a 16 story drop, drop off. And then from the second part of it to down the bottom, it's like another 17 stories. So you don't think it's very steep or very high, but it's crazy high. Huh. That's pretty cool. You don't think about that, you no. know, watching it from, from TV. From TV. Yeah. So you, you can't, don't, you can't don't get realize, that perspective. You don't realize how steep it is, but it's, yeah. When you yeah. walk up in it, it's, it's definitely uh, a challenge. Hey, so Nick, give us um, give us some history on yourself. You know, like uh, when you started and how you started, and you know. Okay. Well, um, uh, a lot of guys don't know I'm from New Zealand. I was born and bred, born and raised in New Zealand, and uh, you couldn't tell. We thought you were from New England. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that New England accent, Texas. you know. <laughs> yeah, South Texas is what I tell everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we, um, I don't know, man. It's uh, my story is kind of unique. Uh, I was in New Zealand. Uh, I left school at 16, and uh, I wasn't doing too good at school. And I was like, you know what? I can't, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to. I'm not doing too good here because I can't. I can't learn something I'm not interested about, right? So I asked my dad. I said, Dad, can I? I need to go to automotive school or something. So he says, Nick, you're not doing good at school. So here, go to automotive school. So I went to an automotive school. And I got top in the class, right? And uh, my guidance counselor said, Nick, you leave school now, you're going to be a dropout, you're going to be on an unemployment doll line, and uh, you basically, you're basically going, you, you're useless. So I says, man, I don't care. I'm gonna, I, I, can't, I can't do this. So I went to automotive school. I got my trade, trade, I got my, uh, trade certificates in uh, and automotive engineering and uh, uh, did my apprenticeship, my 8,000-hour apprenticeship in the automotive dealership. And, uh, I was about 22, 23 years old, and I filled out an ad in the Easy Rider magazine. The back of the Easy Rider magazine, it showed the, the uh, ad for motorcycle mechanics school. In the back. Oh, oh, yeah. In the back. And I was, already, I was already a mechanic. I was already working on all the club guys' bikes. And, and I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot. So I filled the ad out and I sent it off. They called me. They called me. The recruiter called me a month later or so. His name was John. And he called me, and I was about 4 o'clock in the morning. I picked up the phone. I was like, man, I was axing on the other side of the phone. I must be, I must be special. I must be important. So I start talking to this joker, and then he says, "You want to come to the school?" And I'm thinking I'm special, right? He, he's just one of my money. He was just recruiting me to the school. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm on the lottery or something. I'm talking to some some weird accent guy on the phone, and and he's interested about little old me. I'm thinking, wow. So uh, I filled in the ad, sent it in, and uh, he calls me up. And he recruits me to school and I said, you know what, I'm in. I'll come over. I'll figure it out. So I got off the phone and I slain him dead. And I said, you know what, I'm going to figure that out, man. I've never, I've, I, didn't, I didn't know nothing about nothing. I was a little country guy in the middle of New Zealand. and I didn't know nothing about nothing. So I said, okay. So I sold what little I had. And everybody the whole time said, man, you're never going to make it over there. You're not going to. The travel agent says, you're going to get turned around when he gets <laughs> When you get to the other, when you get to LA, they're going to turn you around and send you back. So everybody was negative. I was like, fuck you. The more negative there was, the more I wanted to do it. Yeah. I did it, right? So I came over here with my little Forest Gump suitcase and my little four door toolbox. And uh, I went to the MMI and I didn't know a soul. I didn't know where it was. I didn't have a place to stay, nothing. Did you go to uh, MMI in Arizona? Yeah, it was in 97. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I didn't even, I had no. I had nowhere to stay, nothing, right? So I've been traveling for days. I get up to the motorcycle school, 
And the joker that recruited me was off, was off that week, right? So I really had, I really didn't know anybody. So I was like, oh well. So I walked up front and I had the secretary call me a cab to, you know, to go get find a place to stay. Had my little travelers checks and I was filling out my filling out my. Uh, so she sent me over to this place, Crossroads Apartments. So I went down there and uh, I paid for a couple of months' rent, my travelers checks, and uh, yeah, I walked into I walked into the room. It's kind of funny. I walked into the little uh, uh, studio apartment and there's nothing in this place, right? There's no toilet paper, there's nothing, right? You sleep on the floor, there's like nothing. I'm thinking, man, you you greedy buggers, you can't even put toilet paper in these places. <laughs> so I slept on my jacket for, for a month or so and, and uh, until people started moving out and give me free furniture, right? So I got, a couple, I got a couch from my neighbor when he moved out and I got a bed from this guy and yeah, no, it was just, it was, it was humble beginnings, man, and uh, yeah, and uh, it's kind of the way I started, and, and, and went to the motorcycle school. And it's kind of funny that that I would have given my left leg to go work at somebody's shop, right, for nothing, and uh, I couldn't get a job to save my life. I went to, I went to Titan, I went to uh, Surgical Steeds. John, now John takes pictures of my bikes, right? It's kind of funny. John wouldn't give me a job because I never had no paperwork. I didn't have <laughs> my green card or nothing, so I was illegal. So, uh, but I wanted to work. I'll sweep the freeway. It didn't matter. And, uh, and no one would give me a job. Uh, uh, Surgical Steeds wouldn't give me a job. Uh, this Hollywood Custom Cycles and I-17 wouldn't give me a job. I went everywhere. And I just wanted to just be part of it, right? No one would let me be part of it because I didn't have my paperwork. So I said, you know what? I want to figure it out. So I did my own thing. I cool. started, not like I started with any money. I didn't have a pot to piss in. I just, just figured it out. <laughs> Um, what year did you start Trask performance? Uh, 2000. Started in 2000. So we're going on 20, 20 plus years. Yeah, that's Gee, awesome. So you had your 20th anniversary last year. Well, I'm going to have like a 21 and a half anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just had, I just had my 51st anniversary. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. That's you, know, you know, Nick, people that's like awesome. said, geez, um, when did you start in business? Uh, and, uh, how long you been doing this is the question, right? And I said, well, the last job I had was 1970, so that would give me an idea. <laughs> Man, I just haven't lived that long. Yeah. So, Nick, um, I know yeah. you're kind of infamous for your assault bikes. Tell us a little yeah. bit about these bikes. Well, it's um, these bikes are kind of unique to us, just uh, – I don't know. It's um, it's just the kind of styling I've always liked. Just just the the the, the Mad Max styling of, of, of our stuff, and and uh, you know all our bikes, all our assault bikes, our left bikes, all have that unique front wheel on them. The only way you can get one of those wheels is by the bike. That's right? cool. I perimeter didn't know rotor, that. perimeter rotor, offset spoke, wheel. Yeah. I was actually I was looking at it. It's actually that wheel's modeled off of the HRE, you know, uh, performance uh, automotive wheel. And uh, so I was looking at it. I said, I walked up to my guy who programs my, does my programming. I says, man, I want, a, I want a motorcycle wheel like this, but offset spoke, right? And uh, so we sat there and we sat there with Al, from hours and hours just sitting there programming it up and, and getting the right look. And uh, once we come up with it, it was like, you know what? That's the wheel I'm going to put on my assault bikes. And it's the only, only bike you can get that wheel. And uh, the bike was, the wheel was super light. So and it worked good and it had perimeter brakes, so the braking worked good and uh, I don't know, just try to be unique, right? Yeah, oh, yeah they're awesome. Right. You know, I, I love the FXIs that you've done. Yeah, that's right. You saying. know, they are so cool. Yeah, man, it's um, I don't know, it's it's it's. I guess I know a lot. I what I like, what I think is cool. I don't really care what other people think, right? That's the way I go into it. Is like, fuck yeah. it, they really like it. It doesn't matter. I like it. Hey. And uh, I've just kind of been lucky that uh, guys have liked the same stuff. So when we go into it, we're not going, well, shit, is this going to be likable? Yeah. These guys don't like it. What are they going to think? No. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, Nick, the thing is, when guys like you and myself, when we build a bike, we're building something that we love building and we, we like it ourselves. And yeah. we're really concerned about that 1% out yeah. there that are like us. Yeah, right. Uh, we're not really concerned about the 99%, although most of the time they all love it anyway. 
Yeah, but right. we're not concerned. We're only concerned about a guy like me liking yours and you liking mine. That's the concern. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Right. Yeah, right. Is it a handful of guys who want we want uh right you know, like exactly. or, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's uh you know and, 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 and you know, you've been doing uh so many other things. You know, I have uh you know a 2018 soft tail that I did over and uh, I've got your pipe on it and your air cleaner on it. And I mean, I love that pipe, you know, and I put the same pipe on my girlfriend, Laura's Dinah. Yes. You know, she loves it. You, you know, it's just the pipe that you make that two into one is just awesome. You know, yeah. I really like that pipe. Thanks. It performs great. Makes good power. We've developed it on, we've developed it here in our shop. Yeah. Uh, the, big, the, the biggest thing, man, when, I, when I, we come up with something is, how can I make it unique? How do you make it to where when you walk into a parking lot out of a thousand motorcycles and somebody can pick it out? They can point at it and go, that's whoever's, that's whoever's branding, right? Branding. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and oh, so yeah. Your I'm stuff is to, very unique. Yeah, we try to try to uh, not let something go unless you can visually distinctively go, okay, that's that's that guy's or that's that guy's. Yeah. And uh, so it's kind of funny because uh, the air cleaner, it sat on the shelf for two years because I couldn't think of how the hell to connect the outer cover to the inner cover by right the back of the plate to the outer cover oh, without yeah. having internal hardware. Yeah. 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 Like, man, how the hell? So I put it away. I think about it, bring it back out and pull it away. And then there's just, you know, a link. How do we put a link on the outside? And uh, mechanical looking link. And it's it, it's going to hold the outer cover, but also look mechanical as well. And so that took took forever to come up with that idea. And, and same thing with the exhaust. It's like, man, how do I? Everyone's making an exhaust pipe. How the hell do I make mine unique? So yeah. we title wire it. That's what we title yeah. wire. Right. right. Like, oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's very unique. unique. Very. Yeah. Unique. You know, and that air cleaner. You know, it's funny when I first saw the clear air cleaners. I'm like, oh man, that's you know, I didn't really like them. But the more yeah. I, well, I liked them, the more I liked them. Now, you know, I mean, I've got one on my own bike and I love it. You know? And you're right. That link, those links on the outside are really cool. Yeah. No, we, uh, we even had it patented too. I had uh, Earl go ahead and put, put patents on it. And, and uh, that's a challenge and a half, right? Because every man's oh, dog yeah. has got patents yeah. on air cleaners. Absolutely. Has anybody tried to rip off your product? Oh, yeah. Yeah, these guys are Make something similar or try to, right? But you know, oh, okay. I mean, that's in the rear view mirror. I don't even look at them guys, I just look for right? they have windscreens this big, rear view mirrors this big. Yeah. That's yeah. on those guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, cool. so you obviously sell turbos. Um yes, do you sell do you sell a lot of them? How much more horsepower can somebody get out of uh say a twin cam by adding one of your turbos? Okay. Well, all our systems we make we we have uh we have a system pretty much for every every fuel injector Harley, mm -hmm. uh, every model, right? So uh, you've got a V-Rod system, Sportster system, uh, FL Turing, Dyna FXR. We've got, we've, got, we've got them all if it's fuel injector. Okay, so uh, basically it's a 50 horse bolt on, 8 pounds boost pump gas, right? That's just your general rule of thumb. If you put 8 pounds in the motor, uh, that's half an atmosphere. Yeah, uh, it's basically eight pounds boost, half an atmosphere. So that basically, that basically gives you another fifty percent larger engine, right? Theoretically. So if you've got if you've got an eighty inch eighty inch motor and you put eight pounds in it, roughly you got another you got a hundred and twenty inch motor. Hmm, that's right? a good. I didn't know that. So um, there's a general rule of thumb: put eight pounds in it, you basically put another half a motor on your bike. Yeah, so, which so eight pounds is a lot, more. right? Uh, eight pounds on pump gas. It's 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 not a lot of not a lot of pressure, but it's 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 a, it's a decent amount to where you're gonna feel it. You're gonna get some good mid range. We size the turbochargers to come in soon, so they build nice mid range pull. Mm -hmm. uh, peak torque at around 3,500 RPM. So we uh, size the turbo is really nice. And we use nothing but Garrett turbochargers with all our kits, and they're super dependable. And you know, turbos got a bad name because they had a lot of uh, turbo lag and things of that nature, right? So when guys talk about turbocharging, they go, "Man, I don't want turbo. I think lags like crazy and comes on like a two-stroke." Well, it's not like that anymore. Right, Garrett? 
and a lot of companies they build so many different size turbochargers that they've got a huge range so now we've got more more turbos to pick from so now now we're not going to put a turbocharger off my off my vw bug now i'm, now I'm going to bolt it on my harley and now it's going to be like a two-stroke no i got <laughs> any turbos on. so now we can get these little turbos put them on our system and they make good streetable power yeah how much boost do you run in that uh the bike the bagger. The race the yeah bagger. The bagger. Okay, that bike that run man that was running 10 11 pounds okay right. so that on my bit. i believe on my land speed bike i had between 12 and 14. yeah, yeah. i had between, between 12 and 14 on my land speed bike yeah. Yeah. on that turbo but that was a purposely built turbo from like a four-cylinder car i hate to say yeah. it yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, the difference, it's amazing. The difference between eight pounds of boost and 14 pounds of boost was huge. huge. But, but my huge. motor was also built, built you know, holder. out of concrete. You know, it's not yeah. your average Milwaukee 8 or twin cam that, you know, yeah. can't handle that. It's built to hold the power, right? Yeah. Making power, making power is easy. You know, you gotta build the package. You gotta make sure that the the rest of it. Right. 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 It's the whole yeah. thing. It's not just the well, one. You gotta yeah. Start putting parts out the side. Yeah. 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 We learned that. Um. We learned that pretty quick. Yeah. We learned. We <laughs> learned a lot about turbos on that race bike. Yeah. yeah. We learned yeah, what right? the weakest links were. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's always a, there's always a, a chain of links that that uh, you gotta once you fix this one, then something else is gonna break. Then something else is gonna break. So you just follow it down the line. Uh, we've been doing this long enough to where we know what's going to break at certain levels, and uh, we can know we can be confident that we just tell a customer, okay, at eight pounds, your, your stock motor will hold it. Yeah, it'll hold it. Depending how brutal you are on the bike and how how aggressive you are, and you ask any guy who rides a bike, he asks, do you ride aggressive? Oh yeah, I'm the I'm the badass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, yeah. buddy. Right. All right. And then we go ahead and pull up his Thundermax log. <laughs> he has him revved it over thirty five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> right. We do. A, yeah. <laughs> look at his log, and yet before you talk to him, he's he's the baddest rider out there, and he's been flogging this thing to death. You look That's at the, so true. You oh, look yeah. at the log, and he hasn't been over thirty five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. You know, it's it's. Uh, yeah, no, the turbos have come a long way. You know, and and all the uh, you know the ignition systems and and all the programming and everything that's involved. Yep. You know, you do so much with them. Yeah, that's, that's the key. Right? That's the key is right. being able to control it. Being able to control it, being able to fuel it. And, uh, you know, we've, man, we've been through so many challenges with uh, getting these things to be a productionable kit or a kit that we can send out to a customer and have him do his own turning. And so now we, okay, so the last 10 years or so, it's been like, okay, here's your system. Here's the Thundermax already loaded for you. All you do is plug and play. We get custom sensors made. We have all our stuff made to where it's plug and play. Yeah. No splicing and cutting, and it's it's a direct bolt on. We got Sturgis and we'll turbocharge 30 motorcycles. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How many? How many? 30? Last year was a record. We did 33 bikes. Wow. That's awesome. No kidding. That's so great. 33 in 2020? In 2020. So Never when everybody said right? Sturgis had no numbers, that's yeah. awesome, Nick. Everybody was scared and was like, fuck being scared. Right? Let's go give it heat. So right? when everyone else is going that way, I'm going that way. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just don't follow the crowd, just go give it heaps. So yeah. we did. We went there with 70 some turbo kits, more than ever before. I pushed my guys to death. We got them all built, got them out there. We sold 33 bikes. Turbocharged 33. And uh that was a record for us. It's three turbochargers more than the uh, 75th. Wow. wow, that's awesome, so, Nick. So now you're going to be in Daytona, set up at Ross destination, Ross right? Myers, uh, we're going to be at uh, Ross Myers Harley. Uh, yep. We used to be out there. We used to be out there years ago, and uh, we decided not to do it. So 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 far for us to go, and it's such a such a big uh, getting ready for that show is since it's a couple months previous, right? To get ready for it. So it's just right. Right, too much. So this year, I says, bugger, we're going to go. We're going to go one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. I want to give it heat. Yeah. We just bite yeah. off more than we can chew and then chew like hell. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think Daytona is going to be really good. Everybody's dying to get out and do something. Yeah, man. They'll be stuck in their homes. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully it sets the pace for 2021, too. Like, 
Don't be scared. Let's that. have these events. Damn it. Stop watching the news. Yeah, I agree. Right. A hundred percent. I have not watched any news whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing. It's scaring people, it's scaring yeah. people to death. Yeah. Yeah. It is, but that's what their point is. But yeah. anyway, um, Nick, besides turbos, what is your best selling product? Uh, well, we distribute a lot of products through drag. Uh, you know, we're we're exclusive vendor through drag. And we're proud that we're, we're proud to be exclusive through drag. You know, we got a good relationship, and uh, we we sell a lot of our air cleaners. The drag sell dry drag buys a ton of them. Uh, you know, and, and right at the beginning, you know, I I, I went into drag specialties with a lot different uh, mentality than a lot of a lot of companies. And you know, I was asking guys before I got in drag, shit, what? Did you go to drag? And he says, no, man, Nick, you don't be in drag. They make, they, they take all the money and says, you know what? Man, you guys are looking at it all wrong. This company here is promoting your brand. They're taking you worldwide. So you need, it's going to cost you, right? And so I was like, you know what? Branding is everything. And I went into drag and they, they are awesome company. They're reputable. They're honest. And uh, we got a handshake deal and uh, I'll never go back on it. That's awesome. Yeah, right. That's awesome. So, uh, and your stuff is made in house, correct? Yes. Because yes. we have been to your been to your shop. It's a cool big American factory. You are pumping yeah, stuff out. Yep. Yeah, everything from turbos to handlebars to exhaust to air cleaners, all that. You try stuff. to do everything, right? And sometimes, sometimes you got to slow down and you got to go, Nick. That's Trying to do too much, right? So sometimes you got to get back in your lane. Right? Yeah, so yeah. Any of a couple of products out, and just focus on what we're good at, and uh, we're really good at uh, uh, doing our exhaust pipes. There's nobody that can make our exhaust pipe like we do. Yeah, uh, and uh, it, we're really good at R and D, R and D the product, right? We, uh, we yeah. our, speed, our speed shop is we're, we're passionate for, for developing products, and we and we. Uh, you know, we love it. We get excited. We've got some new products coming out, and uh, we're super excited about them. And and uh, we'll see if everyone, see if everyone else likes it. Yeah. Well, you got a you obviously got a good crew working with you. Well, you got I got I, I I value my crew as being one of the best in the world, right? Yeah. I can't do this stuff by myself. You know, I'm kind of the one that pushes and kind of right. come up with the ideas. But uh, my crew is is, is, is awesome. And I've got, I've spent a lot of years building my crew, and I'm always looking for the best people and yeah, uh, I look for people way smarter than me because, right? It's, it's and I'm not the smartest guy on the fence, but I'm I'm looking for the, I'm looking for the bright guys. I don't want anyone like yeah. me. I'm doing yeah. something nice. Yeah, R and D is important too because you can build a great product, but if it doesn't work, it's yeah, not exactly. so hot. So many do so many companies do that. They uh, they come out with something and it looks great, but it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there's plenty of those out there. <laughs> Without. Yeah. Out. And we have to find out the hard way, you know? Yeah, right. You do. Yeah. So right, I'm going to be calling you on an exhaust soon, too, because we're um, going to be putting together. I have a 93 FXR. That's oh, you, gonna... yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you know that the three of us are all FXR lovers. Yeah. We're absolutely. trying to hoard oh. them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. it's got a, a. Dave's got a beauty for me. He's holding on to my little red beauty. That's right. If yeah. we, it's a, it's next door. Otherwise, we'd show, we'd yeah. show, give you a sneak peek. Yeah. But, yeah, it's sitting right next to your red one. <laughs> <laughs> um. But anyway, so my ninety three, I I'm gonna make it uh, an RT, but and take it to Sturgis. But exhaust awesome. is one of my uh, things that I don't have. I think exhaust yeah. and shocks. Yeah. Are like the last straws that I yeah. need. Okay. No, just give us a yell. You just straighten down. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, all right. We had out, there's a couple of people that kind of commented, um, said, let's see, Nick, um, <laughs> Tropa Town. We got a bunch of people from Tropa Town watching. Um, Flea, Flea, do you, Flea the painter, he says, Nick builds bitchin' stuff. <laughs> um, very industrial looking. Um, Let's see. Josh Reeves says, yeah, Texas is going to claim him. Yeah. <laughs> he texts in. Um, That's what I tell the healers anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Walking up the hill is a pain, but cool when you get up there on that yeah. hill on Gunasika. 
that's yeah, super badass. Yeah. Um, yeah, very cool. Well, a bunch of people have commented that they, you know, love the show today and, and your product. And is there anything else that you would like to promote, tell people, come to Daytona? Come yeah, to yeah. Just get out, get out and enjoy your bikes and uh, support the industry. You know, motorcycling is, is, is a passion for us all. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and uh, just get out there and support it, man. It's, it's Do you... Did you find that 2020 you were busier? I mean, besides I mean, Sterling, you obviously were busy. Busy, but I think it's a lot of guys are stuck at home talking to their wives and they they, they, they got nothing to do. So they go work on their bike in the garage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, we, we've had a really good year. Yeah, we've been super busy. It seems to be everybody that we've talked to or I've talked to the same thing, like whether they have a service shop or products, they're, right. they're just nonstop. I was talking to Brock's. Um, yes on friday and he was telling me that they just killed it in 2020 that right. they they were so incredibly busy he couldn't keep inventory in um you know whether it's like you said guys are working in their garages on their bikes or they're spending money on their bikes because they don't have anything else to spend it on yeah but yeah. i you know i hope that that keeps up yeah we should keep the industry keep the industry uh strong keep yeah. supporting yeah. it create these events um, and support the events, right? And it's like, yeah, I can't say anything. I can't. I can't stress it more. That we just gotta, we just gotta promote the events and just keep the excitement. There. Yeah. Right, I'm, I I see you guys did the did the Strider bike, right? So I'm doing one. Yeah. Right? Oh, I'm yeah. Doing, oh, I'm doing yeah. one too. My mind's going crazy this weekend, just thinking of ideas and and uh, so yeah, it's super exciting. That's yeah. cool. Are so you doing yeah. it for Sturgis? Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I've got so much on the plate, too. Oh, I talked to Marilyn. It's like, you know what? Yeah, send me one. Yeah. 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 They're cool. Yeah, They're cool, cool little bikes. And we're we're big promoters of um, the Strider program, the all kids bikes, which gets um, those Striders in schools so kids yeah. can learn in kindergarten how to ride yeah. a bike. Yeah. They got it. It's yeah. Awesome. It is awesome. It is awesome because it, if we can start them at such a young age, and give them the tools to ride two wheels. Hopefully, it carries on to the whole motorcycle industry. Yes, it will. It's going to be experiences, right? Everybody, we all go back to experiences we had when we were younger, and that's kind of what fuels fuels a lot of our passion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah we need to get more on bikes for sure. Yeah. yeah. So all right, Nick. Well, thank you very much for coming on our show today, and. Um, we will see you in Daytona, but we want we're going to be following you more on the Baga races. Yeah, yeah. we're going to come. Guys, to you guys, no, you guys, you guys got to come out. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. to to stand on those sidelines. It's going to make me want to get on one. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. If it's a Dyna Dyna class, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to. I'm gonna yeah. uh, have to hit up somebody. Let me try on their leathers. Get on one. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me. I uh, I feel proud that you guys even called me, and uh, no, just we just keep doing what we do. Yeah, so we'll exactly. Right. You know, we'll get together in Daytona and, to, and talk about it. But we definitely want to come to uh, Salt Lake City race. Okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, count us in. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right, Nick. Okay, thank you Nick, very hey, much. Thanks. It was good talking to you. Nice talking to you guys too. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, guys. So that was our chopper history today. Um, thanks for all the comments and everybody. I didn't, um, if I didn't get to you for watching, tuning in, and make sure you share our posts and keep commenting. Tell your friends um, to tune in so we can keep chopper history going. And thank you to Indian Motorcycles, Law Tigers, and Badlands for sponsoring chopper history. And if there's anything you guys like us to talk about or hear, people, products, whatever it is, um, let us know so we can make sure that we try to get to it. And don't forget, go over to our Instagram, Perowitz underscore CycleFab, and give us a follow, comment, like. Um, and we're trying to post on there every day. I actually have somebody that's doing it. Jen is doing it for us, which is great because it's something else off my plate. But um, – I think that's it. Otherwise, we will see you on Thursday. You got to Yeah. Dance. We'll see you All on right. Thursday. And um, 
remember Daytona and yeah. our paint show, paint show, March 10th. It's going to be a good show. We've got a lot of response. And uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Yeah. So don't forget, March 10th at the Broken Spoke in Daytona. I actually, our girl Alicia, who does our uh, marketing stuff, is creating a flyer. Hopefully, I have it um, up today, tomorrow. Um, but if you guys see it, make sure you share it. So tell everybody in Daytona on Wednesday, March 10th will be the Perowitz paint show, the first one for 2021. Um, it's a great time. If you have a custom paint job, come on out, enter our show. If you don't come out and spectate, cause there's always cool stuff. Um, we have everything from baggers to choppers to old school stuff to sport bikes. Um, that's the cool thing about our show is we welcome all motorcycles, not just Harleys or American bikes. It's anything with a custom paint job. So um, make sure you guys mark that on your calendar March 10th if you're going to Daytona. It will be at the Broken Spoke in Ormond Beach on Route 1. Um, all right. I think that's it. We'll okay. See you Great. guys on Thursday. Okay. Bye-bye.